so good morning everyone and uh, in yesterday class we were uh, uh, discussing about the trusses uh, the different types of trusses and uh, what are uh, the forces within the members of the trusses and so on okay so we have seen that uh, we normally use these trusses for uh, roofs for supporting the roofing and even in case of uh, bridges also the trusses are uh, provided okay it may be a, a flat truss like this or it may be a arched type of truss over here as you can see in this figure okay and in case of uh, roofs you may have a pitched type of uh, roof truss of this form okay but in any case truss members are subjected to either axial tension or axial compression that is what uh, we have seen from our analysis or uh, previous knowledge okay and uh, coming to the uh, members within the truss so there will be purlins which will be supporting the roof sheeting over here and uh, the purlins in turn will be resting on the principal rafter as you can see in this case this is about the roof truss what i told yesterday and uh, there will be a bottom cord or a bottom tie member which will be subjected to tension this particular member and in addition we also have the members within the web of the truss interior members what you see over here if at all if this member is in tension we call it as a tie member if at all if it is in compression we call it as a strut member so a single member say for example this member okay it may be in tension and also it may be in compression at uh, some point of time okay it all depends on uh, the loading mainly when the wind load is considered in the analysis so based on the direction of the wind uh, this member may be subjected to tension okay on reversal of the wind direction the same member will experience compression over here so it has to be designed for the both uh, cases as a tension member as well as a compression member or else we go for designing it considering one of the criteria and we check it for the other criteria and ensure that it is uh, safe to take up both tension as well as compression over here so that will be the design of member okay and uh, also along with the member design we have to deal with the design of connection okay that is uh, these members have to be connected at this joint okay or any at any joint you'll see that there will be more than uh, uh, two members or two members connected over there so we have to connect them with the help of a gusset plate and at this point you have to design the holes or the welds for the connection okay if at all if you are going with the bolted connection then number of bolts have to be decided their arrangement what will be their pitch distance and all have to be mentioned over there or it has to be calculated and in case of welds you have to specify the weld size and the weld length that has to be decided so that will be the connection design okay and uh, at the supports at the supports we have a, a support in the form of a column it may be masonry column it may be rcc column or it may be a steel column so the truss will be resting on these columns and uh, we have to design the shoe angle over here that is this particular angle what we have here we call this as a shoe angle okay so this shoe angle will be holding this particular part of the truss together okay so there will be two angles which will be connected to this cassette plate over here on either side and they will be placed over a base plate there is a base plate provided over here okay and this base plate will be resting on the column okay that is to uh, disperse the load more uniformly if at all if it is a concrete column or a, a masonry column then in that case you need to make sure that the bearing pressure will not exceed the permissible stresses in the concrete or in that masonry okay so in that case so we use this base plate so that the load intensity will come down for the support okay and to hold all these together okay we have this foundation bolt or the anchor bolt they are also called as foundation bolt or the anchor bolt which are embedded within this column okay so 
in case that there is a wind load what happens is uh, if at all if the reaction at this support if it is in vertically downward direction uh, you have to make sure that uh, it ha it can be supported by this concrete or the masonry or uh, any other support okay and um, if at all if at all the wind load is involved there will be chances that there will be a upward pull over here okay so this support may be pulled in a vertically upward direction in that case the reaction will be in a vertically downward direction reaction at the support that is there is a tendency that this truss will get uplifted from from this support over here so this uh, foundation bolt or the anchor bolt has to be designed to that particular reaction considering the upward re uh, the upward pull as a reaction okay so the diameter of this uh, anchor bolt or the uh, foundation bolt has to be calculated by taking that upward pull into consideration so it is just like the design of tension number or the rounded numbers so that is about the uh, different components what have to be designed over here we have to design the members within the truss and also the connections and the end support okay uh, the cleat angle or this uh, shoe angle whatever i said so that will be decided based on the uh, connection sizes okay it is uh, it is not designed for any ports it is just to hold the truss in position in a proper position okay so they will be provided on nominal basis the thickness of this base plate and even the uh, size of the shoe angle we will be choosing them uh, with the nominal sizes okay we are not going into design of that uh, uh, this uh, shoe angle or the base plate we'll just provide them the size of the base plate the plant size of the place plate or the area of the base plate has to be decided if at all if we know what is the permissible stress in this concrete okay so that can be done just like uh, we used to do it in our uh, slab base or gusseted base knowing the permissible stress in the concrete we can decide what area of the base plate is required over there accordingly we can provide that uh, base plate size here Okay. even the purlin design uh, will not be a part of this truss design okay purlin design is a different uh, uh, design thing so we will not be heading with this design of purlin members we will be only designing the principal rafter bottom time member and rest of the members within the truss over here and this anchor bolts okay anchor bolt and the base plate size will be decided by us okay so what type of members we can provide for this truss member uh, for this truss okay so normally what we adopt in uh, this truss is so the principal rafter and the bottom tie member will uh, be going with the double angle section like this okay placed back to back the principal rafter and even the bottom cord or the bottom tie member this particular member okay so these two members will be uh, composed of two angle sections placed back to back okay in this form right uh, the other members which are there within this truss they will be used as a single angle section okay we will be providing a single angle section out there if required you can go with the double angle section here also that depends on what force it has to support over there what is the magnitude of the force which is coming within this member uh, on that basis we can choose but uh, for us uh, what we are truss we will be dealing with uh, what we will follow is what uh, the top cord uh, the principal rafter and the uh, tie member will be of uh, double angle section and rest of the members which are there within the truss over here there will be single angle section okay so we have come across these designs uh, okay so uh, either you'll be taking it as a design of tension member or a compression member okay so that will be the case in uh, design of members so tension member design is governed by three different criteria okay and uh, compression member we may have a double angle section or a, a single angle strut which is eccentrically loaded okay so based on that uh, accordingly we will design we will go ahead with the design of these members okay so i want to just uh, keep these uh, things in your mind these are the different connections what you may come across so you can see here this is a gusset plate and uh, 
volts have been used for the connection and all the members this is at the ridge point all these members have been connected over here with the help of a gusset wheel this is how the connection happens in a, a truss member at any joint this is a member somewhere within the principal rafter okay so the members have been connected using the gusset weight here also you can see the gusset weight and the connection of the members with the gusset weight over here this is with the bottom time number the connections have been made okay so deciding the size of the member is also governed by the connection details also keep that in mind okay it is not just the force within the member what will decide the size of our these angle section what we are going to provide okay the size of the angles should be such that it should be sufficient enough to accommodate the required number of bolts at these connections okay so if uh, i have a, a force within the member which is very small the force of compression or force of tension may be very very small okay so in that case i cannot uh, go for uh, choosing a very uh, small angle section okay uh, such that it may not be even possible for me to drill the holes for the bolts over here so what we will be doing is we will also be keeping in mind the connections what are to be made at the ends okay so two things what will govern the member selection is one is the member force what is the magnitude of the force okay either tension or compression what is the magnitude of the force coming within the member and also the size of our bolt or the size of our connection at the ends keeping these two things in our mind we will select the suitable members or the angle section isa so we will either go for equal angle section or unequal angle section okay we will see that when uh, we take up the design and uh, this is the connection details at the ends i said it may be a steel column also here it is a steel column the truss resting over a steel column so this is what this is the shoe angle what i said so this is one shoe angle on the other side there is another shoe angle over here and this entire thing is resting on a base plate and that base plate is connected with this steel column okay you can even see in this picture also the base plate the steel column have been provided here this is the end connection so when you have steel column there may not be any anchor bolts uh, provided over here. It is just the normal bolts which will be used for connecting or welds which will be used for connection over here. That anchor bolt or the foundation bolt will come only when we have a concrete or a masonry column provided over here. Even in case of masonry column, we need to provide the concrete to embed that anchor bolt over there. Okay, so that uh, anchor bolts will be normally used in case of concrete columns. Okay, so that is the end connection detail and uh, so i hope these uh, connection details are clear to you and also you can see the purlins these are the purlins what have been provided they are in the angle section they are in the angle form so this is how the purlins are connected with the principal rafter okay over these the sheeting will be provided there may be one more one more angle which will be provided here so that uh, the uh, we can uh, place the sheeting conveniently over that okay it forms a support uh, for the sheeting you can see here like this and even channel sections can be used in as in some terms okay so this is a sag road which is uh, mentioned over here this is mainly used for preventing the buckling of the purlins okay that is the reason why this sag rod is provided okay if the spacing between this trusses is uh, large Okay, so the purlin span will increase and they will be uh, subjected to buckling over here. So to prevent that buckling, to cut that effective length of the purlins, this side rod will be provided. Okay, that, that is just for an uh, information point of view. Okay, uh, so these are some more connection details, what you can see here. This is one and uh, one more connection details. This is in case of uh, if you have a flat type of truss like this. Okay, so you can decide what will be the shape of the gusset angle based on the convenience it will be provided okay so in any case you can see the center line of these members are intersecting at one single point okay this is what the concurrent force system is there in the process okay this forms a concurrent force system over here so we need to make sure that this gusset plate shape will be such that it will accommodate the members and form this point of concurrency over here ok 
okay that is taken care by the fabrication okay so these are all the connections what we be there in the okay so the shoe cleat and all they are also the same things what are being provided okay so this is the indication that there may be a single angle section provided for the member or it may be a double angle section connected back to back like this okay sometimes uh, it may be of a chance section this is normally when you uh, deal with the bridge trusses okay there you may come across channel section or a eye section which are used for the member okay but for the roof truss the angle sections are provided they are more convenient and we don't require such heavy section like channels or angles okay in roof truss we only go with angle sections okay uh, with that uh, what i'll do is i'll just come to the design of tension member we'll just uh, brush up our uh, knowledge of design of tension member uh, so that it will be convenient uh, to take up the design of truss so design of uh, tension member it is uh, entirely uh, will be designing as per the is 800 2007 okay the guidelines what have been uh, mentioned we have come across this in our uh, previous design of steel structure okay so this is the section uh, what we have for a uh, design of tension member i hope you remember this we have gone through this but still uh, if in any case if you are unable to follow those the earlier lectures uh, we'll just brush up this so this is section 6 in our is 800 2007 and in this we have the design of tension member but now what it says is first thing this force force of tension okay uh in the member the factor design tension in a member should be less than the design strength of the member this is the criteria what has to be ensured okay so here td for calculating the design strength of the member we have three different uh, criteria okay the first is yielding of the gross cross section okay so member may not fail due to rupture but what may happen is it may get elongated it may get elongated due to yielding okay so that is the first criteria what has to be uh, checked over here so in that case tdg which is equal to ag into f i upon gamma m not okay so this is giving us the design strength due to yielding tdg ag is the gross area f i the a stress yield stress of the material that is the steel and gamma m not factor of safety for yielding criteria okay so we can get this gamma m not from our is 800 which is 1.1 okay ag the gross cross sectional area of the angle okay we can obtain this from the steel table okay gross area and yield stress depending on what is the grade of steel we can get this yield stress so this is the tdg or the yield strength value of the member okay uh, design which is governed by yielding of the gross cross section the next criteria is rupture due to the critical section so we may have uh, bolts being provided in the member in that case the net area of the member will get reduced the cross area cannot be considered over there and will be uh, finding the design strength due to rupture at this particular critical section where we have the minimum cross sectional area okay so based on that we can determine what is the strength due to rupture so this is for plates what we are interested in is angle sections okay so here we have the single angle section okay this is design uh, strength due to rupture of single angle section so here it is expressed as tdn which is equal to 0.9 enc fe upon gamma m0 plus beta ag not fi upon gamma m0 okay so this takes into account the shear lag effect okay this beta is the factor which takes into account the shear lag effect in the outstanding leg outstanding leg is the one leg which is not connected with our cassette plate this is our outstanding leg whereas this is our connected leg okay in case of welded connection this is our connected leg this is our outstanding leg okay so how do we calculate is 0.9 a and c this anc is the net area of the connected leg taking into account the deduction for the bolt holes we can find out what is the net area of the connected leg 
okay and f is the ultimate tensile strength of the steel gamma m l or gamma m1 stands for the factor of safety governed by ultimate rupture okay governed by ultimate strength over there okay so next is beta the shear lag factor beta is equal to 1.4 minus 0 0.076 into w by t into fi upon fu into bs upon lc and the limiting values for this beta is fu into gamma m0 by fi into gamma m it should be less than this ratio and also it should not exceed 0.7 these are the limiting uh, values for beta okay so in this these notations w stands for the width of the outstanding leg okay that is the width of this leg this is w okay in both the cases and fi and fu are the yield stress and the ultimate stress of the steel bs and lc bs is the shear lag width okay how do we calculate the shear lag with this by taking into the connection details the width of the outstanding leg plus the distance up to the center of this boat from this root up to the center of the boat w t or w uh, t over here okay we can take it as w t so w plus uh, this uh, yeah w plus w t minus t okay thickness of the angle so that will give us bs and similarly lc is the length of the connection based on number of bolts we can find out what is the length of our connection from center of first bolt up to the center of the last bolt that will tell us the length of the connection in case if it is welded connection bs is equal to width of the outstanding leg and length of connection will be the average length of the uh, welds what have been provided in the angles okay so this is uh, beta ag naught is the gross area of the outstanding leg okay so gross area of outstanding leg will be this size of the leg length of this leg okay into thickness of this leg okay so uh, it will be actually slightly different this length minus half the thickness into the thickness okay we'll see that in the calculation okay so that will be ag naught so altogether once we get this beta uh, you need to compare the upper and lower limit this is the upper limit this ratio will tell us what is the upper limit and 0.7 is the lower limit our beta has to lie between these two limits we cannot exceed this ratio we cannot go below 0.7 so that beta will be adopted and then we will go ahead with calculation of tdm design strength due to rupture so that is the second strength what uh, we will be getting in this uh, uh, tension member one more is design strength due to the block shear so again we come across these two cases in block shear so block shear is uh, uh, you can see here in this figure this is what how the member fails under block shear high angle section so there will be two planes which will be uh, coming in picture in case of block shear a plane of tension and a plane of shearing okay so based on along which particular plane tension failure will take place and along which particular plane shearing failure will take place on that basis these two uh, equations have been formed over here okay so cases are there is a tension along the plane 1 2 and uh, shearing uh, sorry tension along plane 2 and 3 and shearing along plane 1 and 2 okay so what may happen is along 1 and 2 there may be yielding and along 2 and 3 there may be rupture this is one case or another thing that may happen is there may be rupture along 1 and 2 and yielding along 2 and 3 okay that is yielding may take place in shear and rupture may take place in tension that is one case another case is yielding may take place in tension and rupture may take place under sharing that is the second case okay on that we have these two equations what i have been written over here okay we'll be determining the strength from both the equations and whichever gives us the least value that will be taken as design strength under block shear okay so after doing this we have three different strength one is due to yielding tdg another is due to rupture at critical section tdn and one more is due to block share okay tdb now you compare these three values out of these three the least one will be 
telling you that design strength under tension okay that will be taken as design strength under tension so if you want to ensure that if your number is safe you should make sure that this design strength under tension is more than whatever the force is there factor force is there within the member okay so that is how the safety is ensured okay i'll just uh, take this example quickly so that it will be clear for you so what is uh, told here is to select a suitable angle section uh, to carry a factor load of 170 kilonewton tensile factor load of 170 kilonewton okay so what is given is m20 bolts are used and the yield strength is 250 newton per mm square so you are actually designing a tension member in this case okay this is a problem from a uh, subramanya book okay and what is done here is first is we have to choose a suitable angle section okay then we'll check its strength okay as a tension member we'll see what is its design strength so for choosing suitable angle section what i recommend is when you go for a bolted connection increase this force by uh, about 20 percent if at all if it is a welded connection increase it by 10 percent okay so that we don't come across any revisions this is what you need to uh, take up so here in this book what uh, the author has done is he has increased this by 10 percent even though it is a bolted connection or he has uh, gone for increasing this by 10 percent okay so after increasing this by uh, uh, sorry uh, what he has done is 170 kilometer he has not increased anything over here so uh, if i take up the design strength due to yielding so what is the design strength of the member due to yielding it is tdg which is given by ag f i upon gamma m naught okay what is done is this tdg is equated to the force which is given to us 170 kilometer okay and the area has been calculated here so what it is giving us is it is giving the required area of the section it is which is coming out to be 748 newton per uh, sorry 748 mm square okay so in this tdg is 170 fy is 250 gamma m naught is 1.1 factor of safety okay so what we is not known to us is this ag we need to calculate this ag that is what has been done over here he has gone for calculating the ag by considering that design strength due to yielding of cross section by that equation okay so what he has arrived is the required area is 748 mm square okay now we have to look for the angle section either equal angle section or unequal angle section with the area of at least 748 newton um, millimeter square or more okay so here this is the angle what has been adopted isa 65 by 65 by 8 it has a area of 976 mm square okay so that is what i recommended to increase this force by 20 or 25 percent uh, so, uh, or this area you increase it by 20 percent and then go for looking for that angle section okay so once you get that angle section so next is we'll check it for the uh, design strength under tension okay so first is strength governed by yielding again with the same equation ag into fy upon gamma m naught ag fy gamma m naught okay so this is giving you tdg value okay it is 221.82 kilo newton okay so this is one of the design strength under tension due to yielding of the gross cross section now coming to the next uh, criteria that is rupture at critical section for that purpose you require the net area of connected leg and gross area of outstanding leg so here the net area of connected leg has been calculated so width of the connected leg okay minus the bolt hole diameter bolts are of 20 mm diameter so bolt hole will be of 22 mm diameter minus the bolt hole diameter minus half the thickness value of the angle section okay so this is half the thickness value that you have to deduct over here okay at the junction half of the thickness value will be considered in the connected leg whereas another half of the thickness will be considered in the uh, outstanding leg okay at the junction of the angle section for that purpose this reduction will be made over here that is thickness by 2 8 by 2 so this is 4 mm so whatever is the length of the connected leg minus half the thickness of the angle minus the bolt hole diameter we have provided bolt holes within this member so bolt hole diameter so 
into the thickness of the angle section this will be the length of the connected leg net length of the connected leg into the thickness of the angle section will give us a n c net area of the connected leg a n c okay a g naught gross area of the outstanding leg so in case of a g naught we don't have any holes being ordered in the outstanding leg what we have to do is take the width of the outstanding leg minus the half the thickness 8 by 2 into the thickness this will be the length of the outstanding leg okay into the thickness okay so that will be 488 mm square okay so these are the two areas a and c and a g naught values okay now what number of holes are required because we need we also need to find out what is the length of the connection while calculating the design strength due to rupture we also have to go to uh, finding what is the length of the connection so in order to get the uh, ls value okay we have to first decide what will be the number of bolts that will be there in our connection so we have the factor force of 170 kilonewton okay and knowing what is the strength of the bolt for m20 bolts the strength is coming out to be 45.3 okay so 170 by 45.3 we require 3.7 by or 4 number of bolts over here and the pitch distance will be 2.5 times the diameter of the bolt okay on that basis we will decide the pitch distance and that has been provided as 60 mm over here so in this case tdn we will go for calculating the design strength due to rupture over here okay so tdn 0.9 fu anc upon gamma m1 plus beta into ag0 into fi upon gamma m1 Okay, you have all these values over here. ENC is there with us, AG0 is there with us, beta has to be calculated. So beta is uh, given by 1.4 minus 0 0.076 into W upon uh, BS. Okay, width of outstanding leg is 65 mm. Okay, it is an equal angle section W. Okay, here uh, from this equation, uh, sorry, W by T and BS upon LC. Okay. So W 65 by 8 to this is your 5 upon FU and BS is uh, what we have for BS is this W plus WT minus T. Okay, so this is 65 plus the edge distance. Okay, this is the edge distance. What is this? 35. Okay, minus T. Okay, so that will be your uh, BS upon LC. LC will be four bolts have been provided, so it will come across three pitch of 60 mm. So three into this 60. So this gives us beta value of 1.199. Okay. So on substituting this beta value over here, it is more than 0 0.7. And uh, when you are doing the calculation, make sure that it is less than that uh, ratio of F U into gamma m naught by F I into gamma m one. Okay. And then so this is giving you uh, our value of TDN is 225.08 okay so this is the another strength under tension governed by rupture of the critical section okay similarly when we come for a calculation of a strength governed by block shear so we require AVG, AVN, ATG, ATN okay AVG stands for gross area along the sharing plane AVN is the net area along the sharing plane ATG cross area along the tension plane, ATN net area along the tension plane. So we have seen in earlier uh, this one, uh, but still uh, coming to this uh, block shear diagram. So AGVG, okay, it is the area along this line from this end to the center of this bolt, okay. So whatever the length is, the end distance plus the pitch distance plus the uh, plus half the Bolt diameter that into the thickness of the angle will give you AVG. If I do make the deduction for this bolt holes, then it will be AVN. Okay, net area. The only difference between AVG and AVN is whether you do the deduction for the bolt hole or no. Okay, if you don't do the deduction for the bolt hole, it will be gross area along the shearing plane. If deduction for the bolt holes is considered, it will be the net area along the shearing plane. Okay, now another area uh, is along the tension plane so ATG if I don't consider the deduction for bolt holes it will be ATG that is this length along line 2 3 
up to the end of this angle into the thickness of the angle will be ATG. If at all, if I deduct this bolt hole, how many number of bolt holes are here? One and half bolt hole here. So 1.5 bolt hole, if I deduct 1.5 into 22 mm. So if I deduct that length in this total length and multiply with the thickness of the angle, it will give me ATG. Okay. So this is the areas how you calculate this AVG and ABN, ATG and ATU. Okay. So in one of these areas, deduction for bolt hole is not considered, whereas here the deduction for bolt hole is considered AVN. ATG, no deduction for bolt hole. ATN, deduction for bolt hole is taken over here. Okay. So this is the value of the areas along sharing and tension planes. Now after you have them, so if you substitute for uh, uh, them in our equation for the block shares, the two equations what we have here, if you substitute them over here. Other than this area, rest other values are factor of safety and the uh, stresses due to uh, the yield stress and the ultimate stress of the material. Okay, so that will give us the two values of the member in block shear. Okay, the least of these two will be taken as strength under block shear. So here it will be 249.52. Okay, now out of this 249.52, 225.08, and one more is due to yielding of gross section. It is so into yielding of cross section 221.82 km. So out of these three, whichever is least will be taken as our strength under tension, strength design strength of the member under tension. Okay, so it is 209.92. It has been taken from this equation. Uh, this is an approximate equation what can be used for calculating the rupture strength. Okay, I'll just ignore this over here. If I just consider uh, 249, 225 and this uh, 221. So 221.82 will be our design strength under tension. Okay, and it is more than 170 kilonewton. So whatever angle we have chosen is same. Okay, we can provide that angle and also it is sufficient of uh, sufficient size that we can accommodate the bolts in that. Okay. 65 is the angle uh, leg size, width of the leg. And what bolt hole we have to drill, drill in that is 22 mm diameter bolt hole. Okay. After doing this, uh, you need to uh, make sure that the end distance or the edge distance are available. Okay. So that is the design of tension number. Okay. And uh, along with this tension member, the other type of member what we come across in uh, process is the compression member okay so in case if it is a double angle section the design will be uh, of a eccentric connection okay so here the design strength is expressed as a into fcd pd which is equal to a into fcd so section 7 you need to uh, follow the guidelines in section 7 of is 800 2007 okay for design of compression member so here the design strength under compression PED is equal to A into FCD where A is the net area of the member okay effective cross-sectional area of the member and FCD the design compressive stress okay so FCD you can either for use any of these equation for finding FCD by calculating this chai the stress reduction factor the imperfection knowing the imperfection factor and the non-dimensional cylinder ratio you can go ahead with calculation of this and uh, since we are dealing with large number of the numbers, maybe three or four numbers may have to be designed. So what we'll be doing is, uh, we'll be straight away going ahead with these tables. Okay. So the tables what are given here? Table number eight A B C D or nine A B C D will be used for uh, checking the member strength under compression. Okay. So that will be. Uh, convenient it will save a lot of time in this case okay uh, we have done this uh, using the uh, equation these formulas earlier so we will no longer use these equations for that so when it is a case of double angle section what you have to do is directly find out the slenderness ratio and go ahead with the slenderness ratio and the yield strength knowing the slenderness ratio and yield strength you can determine what is the stress reduction factor from this table okay so when we use the angle section they belong to class C, buckling class C. So we always come across this table 8C in this case, in case of process. 
because we are using the angle section and they belong to buckling class C. Either you, ha you have to use a table 8C or table 9C that is fixed. Okay, so that is one thing. Now, in case of uh, the members which are composed of single angle sections, okay, so where you have single angle section, we I said we have to provide single angle sections for the members which are within the truss. So there it will be a case of eccentrically loaded uh, connections, okay, angle struts, okay, which are there within the truss uh, area, okay. So these have to be designed as eccentrically loaded members, loaded through one leg only. So in this case, instead of that uh, non-dimensional slenderness ratio lambda will go ahead with equivalent slenderness ratio, calculating the equivalent slenderness ratio lambda e. So lambda e is given by this expression root of k1 plus k2 into lambda bb square plus k3 into lambda pi square. k1, k2, k3, the constants depending on end connection which are mentioned in this table 12. Okay, so we can decide what number of volts are there. Okay. What are the minimum number of volts we, can, we are going to provide in a truss that can be decided over here and on that basis we can assume the end connection over here either fixed or uh, uh, hinged okay so this will give us what is k1 what is k2 and what is k3 okay so uh, if at all uh, normally what uh, we do is we don't go with one single volt okay i want to have at least two volts in my truss connection okay so with two volts okay and uh, what is the fixity whether it is hinged or fixed okay uh, deciding that fixity condition we can find out what is k1 k2 k3 okay so once you have k1 k2 k3 lambda bb and lambda pi depend on member properties okay what is the center to center length of the member that will be known to us because the stress layout will be provided over there or the member length will be mentioned to us okay that will be center to center length and RVB will be the property of the member which we can obtain from the steel table. Okay, B1, B2 are the uh, sizes of the two legs. If you are equal angle section, B1 and B2 will be same or else they will be different. Okay, T again the thickness of the member. Okay, and this is E. Make this correction. This is not epsilon. This is E. Okay, Young's modulus. Okay, so on that basis you can find lambda V and lambda phi and then the equivalent slenderness ratio. Now this equivalent slenderness ratio has to be used for calculating the strength of the member. Okay, that is in this table what we have here. Okay, so we have to come back with the same equation. So, yeah. Uh, this is the equation what is there so what you have to do is instead of considering this as lambda you need to take it as lambda e and then find the stress reduction factor okay so with that you will be able to find what is the design strength under compression for a single angle strut okay Uh, this is uh, one example on eccentrically loaded single angle strut. Okay, I'm just uh, taking this example, worked out example, uh, so that it will be helpful for you when we take up the design of trusses. Okay, so how do we calculate? Uh, okay, connected by two volts. Okay, for two volts at the ends, it is determined that K1 is 0.2, K2 is 0.35, and K3 is 20 from this table 12. Okay, so epsilon it comes out to be 1.0. And lambda vb okay what is given here is the length is three meters okay three meters so lambda vb is three thousand divided by r vb which is 39.3 okay divided by pi square e upon 250 so lambda vb comes out to be 0.5859 okay this is what i'm telling is how do you find the strength for a angle section which is loaded through one leg only we come across such cases in case of trusses when we are designing the interior members of the truss. Okay, so this is about finding K1, K2, K3, knowing the details of the connection, and then obtaining lambda BV value. Lambda BV will be L upon R BV divided by epsilon into pi square E upon 250 under root. Okay.
bracket so this is 0.59 and lambda pi b1 plus b2 upon 2t divided by epsilon into pi root under square root pi square e by 250 okay so this comes out as 0.1125 in this particular case what problem i have taken here in this case it is here lambda vb and lambda phi on obtaining lambda vb and lambda phi the equivalent slenderness ratio lambda e okay which is under square root k1 plus k2 into lambda vb square plus k3 into lambda phi square over here so this lambda e equivalent slenderness ratio value is 0.843 okay knowing this then we will go ahead with finding the permissible stress under compression fcd okay so either you can go for finding the stress reduction factor chi or you can directly find the permissible stress in compression fcd so here phi value 0.521 plus alpha which is 0.49 in perfection factor for angle section it is 0.49 it belongs to class c for which the alpha value comes out as 0.49 okay into uh, lambda e minus 0.2 plus lambda e the whole square this is the equation the values have been substituted in this equation and phi comes out as 1.013 from this efcd is 138.56 meter per mm square and make sure that if this FCD is less than F5 upon gamma m0, it should not exceed the yield stress. Okay, so after that, it will give us the design strength under compression by multiplying with effective area. So, effective area for this angle section, what has been chosen here is 200 by 200 by 20. For that, it is uh, 7640 mm square. So, 138 PD, uh, sorry, FCD into A upon uh, this that will be in terms of kilo time okay so this is what the fixed end condition has been considered another condition what has been considered is hinged end condition there k1 k2 k3 will change okay so when that k1 k2 k3 changes the lambda e value is 1.322 here it was uh, sorry a phi value is 1.32 or lambda value is 1.098 and here lambda phi value was 0. 1125 okay lambda e value was 0.843 here it is 1.098 okay so lambda e in case when full fixity is considered it is 0.843 lambda e when uh, hinged end condition is considered it is 1.098 okay so in this case the design strength is coming out to be 809.8 kN earlier it was 1058.6 kN okay so this is when the bolts number of bolts are two or more than two okay so normally we'll assume that we are going to provide at least two bolts in our truss connection we'll not take the case of single bolt okay it is feasible to provide two or more than two bolts i hope this uh, calculation is clear okay just uh, brush up your uh, calculation regarding design of tension number and compression number that's what is required over here okay so thank you